The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Welcome back to Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, your station for fresh news, smart talk all day. Mr. C.A. Nuri is on his way into studio. It's a Tuesday, which means he's going to continue his series in critical theology with Dr. Cleveland Enius III, also known as Kahun Anku Sarah. I'm sure another interesting conversation uh, and so I want to continue from the last hour. There were some texts here that I didn't get to read. I want to put them on the record. Here we go. Erin, we need to be honest. Many women are inherently selfish. This can be good because there is no one they will sacrifice or they won't sac they, there's no one they will sacri sacrifice their child for. An example of this going wrong it is marital rape. It is only discussed as if only men can rape. The text are there. I agree with you. I think that um, this conversation would shift if we understand the fundamental point that men can be victims of rape also. Men can have physiological responses that don't align with what it is they are thinking or they want. A perfect example of this is young men in school, unable to control a public expression of their arousal. It is important to note that men can also be victims of rape and marital rape. Another text, it is funny, women will demand money to help take care of the child, so you give them your resources, then they will turn around and say, here, you take care of the child. Will, will she send him home with some of those resources to take care of the child in those cases? Now, that's an interesting one as well, and I think that that is a also an issue for lower wage earners, right? Where men in particular are budgeting very tight resources, and a man who may have had to leave the marital home, pay rent for his own housing, pay for his own housing while he's supporting the marital home and paying child support. A man who is not a high wage earner may have considerable trouble with it. They may, like, they may want to be able to do it, you know. They may think that as man, I should be able to take care of that household and myself and pay the child support and take care of all those needs, but they just cannot afford to do it. But that's why we need to talk more, Bahamas. We need to talk to each other more. Because like I said, these are the foundations for policy making. This is where the state goes to find out what the people feel and think about policy ideas and legislative initiatives. You get the feedback from the people. So once again, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nuri, for giving me that space to read these texts. Producer, let's go to a break and let's let Mr. Nuri open his show. See how Cora I look funny all black up yesterday? But she say she bumped into a wall when she's running after the churn them. Yeah, but last Saturday you see her arm was all black and blue, right? What you saying? You think something wrong between her and Jack? I ain't sure, but you know Jack is a jealous man. I hear him and Cora last Friday. I hear him say he hear Cora have eyes for Junior. Now you know that ain't true. Cora is a good woman. Does mind her business, take care of them churn and go to church every Sunday. So what you think we should do? I think we should report Jack, you know. Cora don't say nothing, but silence hides violence. And we don't want to line up in the 
cemetery. Not me. I ain't getting in nobody business then Jack come after me and I land up next to Cora. No man, we could call a text crime stopper. And remember, we can even get some grocery money for our tip. Remind me again how does this work? We can call them in Miami at 328 tips or 328 8477. Or when we in the island call toll free at 300 tips or 300 8477. And if you don't have no minutes, use the crack crime Bahamas app and we could text them and the messages get all mixed up, mixed up before it leave your phone so nobody can know what you're saying. So what are we waiting on then? Let's go earn some grocery money. Just sign in and have a seat, please. They'll call you in for your x-ray shortly. That's why they call it a waiting room. You won't have that problem at 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center or Imaging at Groner. We never schedule multiple appointments, so you'll be in and out in no time. And if your initial screening reveals a concern, our radiologist can conduct an alternative screening right then and there. Call 328-8157 to schedule an appointment at 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center or Imaging at Grosvenor today. Love the show? Want to give your support? Become a sponsor today. Call 302-2300 for our rates and packages. That's 302-2300. Become a sponsor on Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. And welcome back to Guardian Radio AM. Today is Tuesday, Tuesday, April 23rd, and a little after 11 o'clock in the morning. And once again, this is C.A. Nuri, and I shall be your host for the day. And of course, we have Kahun, Uncle Sarah, with me. I'd like to thank Aaron for holding on for me. You know when you're just running late, and you just say, man, I come in. Just start the show. I come in. And it allowed her to continue and read the emails. I mean, I'm sorry, the texts. She had a number of texts that she wanted to go through. So thank you very much, Erin. Today, we have Cahoon Anku Sara, other known as Dr. Cleveland Enius III, who is a critical theologist. That means that he his degree, his doctorate's degree, is in critical theology, where he analyzed one or two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight religions and have come to a conclusion, come to a conclusion that uh, most of the religions started in Africa and, and that particularly Christianity, and he calls it Christianity. Did I pronounce that right? Christianity. I get it closer. Mm-hmm. Christianity, what monotheism, what he called atonism, started in Africa and that his version of Christianity, even though similar, to Christianity, right? Um, there is a variant pathway. He has a number of books, a number of sacred books that has been mentioned in the um, King James Version. What that abridged version call again in the King James? The Zondervan King James. That, that Zondervan, I can't pronounce it well. Uh, where they reference the books that he actually uses. That is, what is your Pope call again? Basash. The Basash. I'm going to learn all these vocabulary yes, words, yes. but so forgive me that I pause and give. I want to give credence to mm-hmm. to to your 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 hierarchy in general. It's Baseth, Baseth, Basash, Basash. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Pope in in his Christianity, um, they use and crafted uh, a a worshiping experience that is an ancient worshiping experience that ha- just happened to start in Africa. Today's topic. Today's topic about is about a movement that I've seen happening. Where I'm going to challenge Uncle Sarah. I'm going to challenge him and, and and say that there is a movement about Black Americans, Black Americans in particular, who are to me are trying to find themselves. They are trying to find themselves because they have been subjugated so long uh, in America, and they are different from we. Black people who in the Caribbean, we black people in Africa, we black people who are the majority in the country that they're in. So black, I find me, I find that black Americans in their search to making their space in America, that there is an outpouring or search of religion. There are both scores of black led religion now, concepts. New Age concepts that, to me, has started in America, Black America, not necessarily in 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 Africa. One of those religion, I think, I'm going to challenge on Kusura, is the Bash Bash Chef Basif Basesh, Basesh mm-hmm. right? He is African, but he's also American. He lives in America. He's an American man. You speak him, speak to him. He doesn't has have an African accent, 
but he has started, he has embraced a ancient African religion, but that religion to me seems to be very African-American-ish, right? Um, I, I, I had the, the what that group is, I have come every so often, Aaron, forgive me. Israel United in Christ? Thanks. The Israel United in Christ grouping has a religion based on uh, Israelites, they're being the true Israelites, and, and they prove their religion through the text, whatever it is, because they're Bible-toting men, right? But that, too, to me, seems like an African-American religion, them trying to find themselves, so they go into Africa searching themselves, and you can see it on YouTube. If you're a YouTube or, or social media follower, follower you see there is a plethora, all kind of new age information about uh, Africa, uh, leading the world, Africa starting European countries, Asian countries, this religion, that religion. And I said, but these African Americans are all over the place. They're all over the place. So when they see that they started all things. So this is where the, the, the conversation comes. I know that in the Bible it says that at the end, our Lord is going to pour his spirit <clears throat> out on all nations and they will start finding themselves. Right? There's a Jewish text said, uh, uh, where I, I listened to an uh, a Anglo-Jewish rabbi who said that um, the Jews will find themselves and come home. The true Jews will find themselves and come home. And he was debating on, on whether the Israelites, Hebrew Israelites, were, were Jews on their claim. And he, said they, and he concluded that they more likely are, right? Because uh, the Anglo-Jews were adopted in. But these Hebrew Jews, they can trace their identity from beginning of time. And they know that there were Jews who went to Africa and they went to Northwest Africa. They said that's part of their tradition. They know, they're aware that that happened. Now, these particular set, they said they might come across information that uh, may be truth. And they, they quoted, said, people in South Africa, the black people in South Africa, have the DNA. So they can prove it. They have black people in Ethiopia who have the DNA. So they can prove that there is a connection for sure. Right? There are, uh, Idi uh, no, I'm sorry, I, um, Nigerians, Igbo people who have DNA of uh, the religious sect of Israelites or Jews. They have the DNA in them. So when they claim that yeah, they are the true Jews, they have DNA in them that can prove it. And that's where my conversation uh, is going to be about um, Uncle Sarah. Um, your concept of, of Christian identity, Christian identity, is it a fad that African Americans is adopting and they started their own church? Well, first of all, thank you uh, very much, Brother C. A. Nuri, for having uh, me and, and the Holy Coptic Church here at uh, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. My name is Kahun Anku Sarah, also known as Pastor Dr. Cleveland W. Enius III. I'm the, the head priest of the Holy Coptic Church of the Black Messiah here in Nassau, Bahamas, and we are under the auspices of the Holy Coptic Church International, being guided by our Coptic Pope, our Basesh. Rev. Dr. A.J. Vama, <clears throat> um, you, you bring up a very interesting point, um, and I think it's a point that that is kind of rooted in your perspective of how you may be seeing things. Because if you were in London uh, or in the, in Europe, you would see the same thing. If you were in uh, or on the continent of Africa, you would see the same thing. If you were um, you know, obviously throughout the Caribbean, um, you would see the same thing. You would see a people who had been dispersed and having been dispersed are now seeking their true religious identity or, or trying to find out exactly who they truly are. Africa as a continent with over 50 countries is not a monolith. And so there's not any one African religion that every African adhere to. Um, we as people who are the victims of human trafficking, uh, of slavery, we ha come with us, uh, as my grandfather wrote in, in his book, Bay in Town, he talks about the, the blood of, of varied ancestries uh, uh, coursing through our veins. 
and this ancestry is seeking to become. It is seeking to ultimately manifest in a way that allows for us to take control of our destiny once again. In the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 31, it says, Then said Yahshua, whom many called Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. This reality of the sheep being scattered all right, just quickly going into the language, we understand that language is key, and a lot of times when we're trying to understand exactly what Scripture is saying, it's because we don't necessarily just pause and just look at the language. But this idea of, of being scattered abroad is the word diascorpizo, this idea of a diaspora, right? And so this group of people that are seeking their identity um, can be found all over the world. Um, when you talk about the Holy Coptic Church of the Black Messiah and our um, head priest, our high priest, uh, Dr. A.J. Vama, who was born in Liberia, West Africa, but moved to the United States at a very young age and grew up in, in, in the United States, he had a teacher. His teacher, who also uh, spent a lot of time in the United States, also had roots in Sudan and in other parts of Africa, like we all do. And so, you know, what you see with different organizations um, bringing forth uh, information that is tying us back to the continent or tying us back to ancient records is nothing short of what we ended last week's show with. It's, it's a... a uh, we call a, a DNA explosion, all right? How do the, just to give you an example, as you drive around the streets of New Providence, you will see now that some mango trees have actual mangoes on them already. Some have blossoms on them. Some don't have anything on them. How do these trees know when to blossom? How do, how, how do these trees, um, you know, later on, you know, the sea grape tree will do the same thing. Um, the tamarind tree, all of these trees have a certain time of year when the conditions are just right for them to actually blossom and then for them to actually bear fruit. We as a people are no different. We are in what is called the sun cycle. The sun cycle would have started uh, officially in the year 1970 and that came out of a revolutionary period in the 1960s where, where the same thing that we're talking about now was happening, where uh, so-called black people were wearing their afros and wearing the dashikis and trying to find a link to where they ultimately came from. And as we moved into this sun cycle, certain information became more available, certain records or this idea of the seven seals having been unsealed actually began to take place. And certain information having been revealed caused there to be certain organizations that now having this information were able to, to form. So when you go back to the great, the works of the great Marcus Garvey, Marcus Mosiah Garvey, even though we would say, well, this is an is a, is a African-American thing, Marcus Garvey is from Jamaica. Marcus Garvey was inspired by a Bohemian, Dr. Robert Love. He came into this space. What, 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 what is able to happen in America can't happen in many other places around the world. This idea of free speech, this idea of I have a, 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 an idea and this space will allow for me to actually... Um, incubate this idea long enough so that it can grow and become what it can't become in some other countries. So America is, 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 is a ground for many organizations and many people who have that freedom to do that. Now, of course, we didn't just go to America. We were brought to America. We were kidnapped. We were, we were trafficked into America. We were trafficked into the Caribbean. But because we were trafficked into these spaces, it didn't change who we were. The problem then uh, becomes because we've been mixed over so many years, finding out 
who we are becomes difficult without a guide. So the, the Marcus Garvey gave way to many other guides, such as Elijah Muhammad, Dusali, um, um, Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, Malcolm X. In some way, some, some shape or some form, many of the great thought leaders in this day and time came out of the movement of Marcus Garvey, even in the Bahamas, even your Sir Randall Fox, your, 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 your Sir Lyndon Pendens. These people were being inspired by the UNIA. And that force of the UNIA, that didn't come out of America. That came out of the Caribbean. Even today, what they call hip-hop, which is one of the leading genres of music, though it, it, it thrived in America, people in the Caribbean are very much a part of the the, 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 the root of what you're calling hip-hop today. So the idea that everything that we're seeing is coming out of America, again, is, is rooted more in perception than in, than in reality. I also find that the number of these religions, what yeah. I call black-led religions, right? Mm. Um, I, I would dare say that Christianity is not a black-led religion. We adopt that. We have a European concept of Christianity uh, and that we adopted. Even the Baptists, the Anglican, the Catholics, uh, these Methodists, it's an Anglo religion that we have adopted and accepted. Mm. But the black led religion, which seems to have some kind of independence, always has some kind of conspiracy concept about it. Like, what? Um, the Jamaat ul Islam said, Yako? 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 Yako. Yako created white people. Mm. Right? And they wholeheartedly believe that this is true thousand years ago that white people were created mm-hmm. man, manipulated to come into being mm-hmm. right um, the, uh, the Hebrew Israelites saying that they were captured by Haganazi Jews what do they call the Jews called? Ashkenazi. Ashkenazi Jews mm-hmm. and that their identity was taken from them and adopted corrupted and that they were put in captivity while their true identity was hidden from them, right? Mm-hmm. And, and they use scripture to explain that, to say, quotes that they will know who they are and they have to come and find themselves, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, the church of, the Coptic church of the black Messiah mm-hmm. suggests that an Anglo religion, an Anglo people come and corrupted Christianity take it for their own, and then twisted it and say, okay, we originated this. Why the black religion have so many conspiracy? Why can't they say, man, we start this and that's that? Well, again, that's, that's, that's a, 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 in large part due to perception and in large part um, due to not having truly questioned the Holy Coptic Church of the Black Messiah in a way that would allow for you or others to really appreciate what we're saying. Nothing about the Holy Coptic Church of the Black Messiah and its origins has anything to do with white people. No? No. Because you're, you're using the Bible. White people No, Bible. we're not using anybody's Bible. Our scriptures, our records, which can be proven and which they have verified, right? They are using the original records to create what they're calling their Bible, what they're calling their versions of scriptures. You understand? There's, it, I'm not using anybody's Bible. I am taking a hijacked version of our scriptures that is being seen as the Bible, that is being seen as God's word, and using it to assist my brothers and sisters who feel as if this is God's word and saying to them, okay, if it is indeed God's word, let us look at the word. Let us look at the language. Let us actually go in and see exactly what the original intention of this book that you're holding actually is, all right? We start before we even open the Bible by asking you, is the word Bible in the Bible? We asked this question weeks ago, and the answer is no. The word Bible is not in the Bible. Bible means collection of books. That's some Greek words, man. Right. So, Bibios. Or so, some sort. Well, the word Bible or Biblion mm. goes back to Egyptian papyrus. Mm. You understand? So you ain't Greek. No, the Trans- Greeks. African again. The Greeks, remember now, you had four major empires. These are the four horsemen in the book of Revelation. You had Babylon, you had uh, Greece, you had Rome, and then you have New Babylon, 
which is America and many other countries that they ultimately influence, right? When the Greeks took over from the Babylonians, they brought with them Hellenization. They brought with them this idea of what their interpretation or their narrative of the things that they met in place would be. Even though they didn't understand everything that they were able to put their hands on, they ultimately wanted to make sure that the indigenous people who needed these records to actually be able to rule themselves, they wanted to make sure we didn't get our hands on it. So this is why they have libraries and museums and archives and private collections where they can store information that they are able to read or have access to so that they can create or control a narrative that becomes our religion. You understand? So when we talk about the use of any particular scripture, if I am, as a person who was raised in the Bahamas, I was raised reading the King James Version of the Bible and, and, and other versions of the, of the Bible, right? As a critical theologist, my teaching and my understanding is this Bible has an origin. This Bible has a root origin. This Bible didn't come directly from the Most High in English. Someone had to translate this book and put it into English. And before it was into English, it was in other languages. It was in the Latin. It was in the Greek. It was in the so-called Hebrew, going all the way back to what they call the hieroglyphs or back to the Bantu cluster of languages. Wait, wait. So you're in the red letter, what they say Jesus said inside the New Testament, he ain't necessarily Jesus said it. You know, quote? They uh, how someone, how did they record that? Was he speaking in English? That's just a simple question. Did the Messiah speak English? You know that. You know he, we know he didn't speak English. So someone had to translate this into English. Someone had to actually um, take, it couldn't have been a recording. I mean, if it they was. They had no recorders. <laughs> yeah, they had no recorders, right? They had to have had somebody or something that allowed for these records to be recorded. We could say that. But ultimately, what we understand is that these records that are being the ones that we talked about last week that are, in some instances, thousands of years older than what you're calling the Bible, right? Nobody heard anybody say anything, okay? People were taking portions of records to create a story for themselves. And in creating a story for themselves, it, we know it wasn't divinely inspired because how did they get us to believe in it? They beat us over our head. They beat us until we believed it. You mean God didn't come into us and just change us automatically? Well, you tell me. Did God actually come into the Christians in the lands where we were being enslaved and say to us, follow my word, or were there whips and chains involved? Anyway. Yes, there were whips and chains involved. I mean, there were whips and chains involved, though. <laughs> I, I just said part. <laughs> yeah, that part. That part. That part. There were whips and chains involved. We, yeah, we could bypass the, that. The the good ship Jesus that we were brought here on. Yes. Right? When we was waiting this for This was Jesus, God's divine plan. We were waiting for a ship to come and take us back home. This was God's divine which plan. We call heaven. We black people had to go through that or we was going to find Christianity. We had to go through slavery. No, we had Christianity. See, that's another that's another fallacy. We had to be in whip. We had to be enslaved. Mm -hmm. We had to be murdered and killed so we could get Christianity. So we, we who already had Christianity, we who already had a way of life, we who already had, as Pope Augustine of Hippo, where he talks about a Christianity before Christ, before the European Christ, Julius Caesar, we already had a original sacrificial shepherd called Asaru. We already had a way of life. That's why the Messiah says, he talks about this way. I am the way. This I am. This Ane. This Ane Re. This, this name that was supposed to be used uh, as according to Exodus 3, 4, uh, verses 14 and 15, right? We, we don't call on the I am. We say God, which is actually a, a, a German word, gut. So we talked about this many times. But somebody is creating or has created a parallel doctrine that allows for us to think that we're calling on our divine ancestors, that we're calling on, on our divine lineage, when in fact we're calling on their family, 
this was this was actually the the issue that the Messiah had with these people. I don't, so when you say well, black. Uh, religions or black organizations, we have a conspiracy. Our conspiracy was no different than the conspiracy, if you want to call it that, than the conspiracy of the Messiah. Because the Messiah was talking to these people who was calling themselves Jews, and he was saying, but you don't know Abraham, right? If you go to John chapter 8, right? He was saying, John chapter 8, verse 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we be Abraham's seed. And we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou ye shall be free? So we know that these these weren't the people who they who said they was in Egypt being enslaved. Because they never enslaved. They say they was never enslaved. So somebody is pretending to be, right? The people who were the chosen, those who are of Ishmael, Israel, and Midiani, right? Jesus answered them in John 8 34, verily, verily I say unto you, whosoever committeth Sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. Forever, if the son therefore shall make ye free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my my word hath no place in you. So you you of an Abraham, because what they did was again they created this actual parallel doctrine. So they had their own Jacob. They had their own Abraham. They had their own um, 12 tribes. This is, this is what these um, Hellenists and these uh, people who, who, who did or used what is called cultural diffusion, they called the original tribes of Ishmael, they said Ishmaeli. They called Israel, Israeli. They called Midiani, Mitani. Sounds very similar. Sounds very much as the same, but it's not the same. So the Messiah understood this. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do that which you have seen with your father. We don't have the same daddy, bro. We don't have the same daddy. See, so that could constitute a conspiracy theory, right? He's saying that they're the Jews, but he's saying you have a different father than me. Different origin. You have a different origin than me, right? He says, um, I speak that which I have seen of my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You or ye do the works of your father, then said they, they unto him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even one God. What you talking about, Jesus? We have the same father. Fornication meaning mixing of the seed, right? Mm. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and the father of it. So, this Messiah also had a conspiracy theory, whereby he knew that some people who were saying they was his brothers, that they was of his tribe, didn't have the same father. He said, you, I am from God. Or in, in the book of, of the same chapter, eight, John 8, 23, he say, you are from beneath and I am from above. But this word above is the word anu. This anu can be traced back to the Sumerian text, which just takes us right back to these records we, we started to talk about. So even the Messiah was talking about these ancient cuneiform tablets, these records that are African records because the people in Sumeria ultimately migrated out of Ethiopia. So these are, again, were African records. These, again, were African people who had migrated because they say Cush gave birth to, to Nimrod, and Nimrod was the son of Cush, but Cush is Ethiopia. So this Cush or this Cushite, right, gave birth to a Nimrod. Nimrod migrated into what is called Sumeria, and he built five cities. So these five cities would have been using the architecture and the building methods and the codes and formulas of Ethiopia, whereby 
The records coming out of Sumeria are also Ethiopian records, African records. And these Ethiopian or African records were then used to ultimately create what the Greco-Romans are now holding up as their scriptures. That's why the word Anu is in there. That's why in the book of uh, Ezekiel 8 and 14, you see the word Tammuz. Tammuz is another Sumerian deity or guardian angelic host. Coming back to that, we yeah. have some calls. On, Go ahead. I, I want to engage you, but I want to not deviate from the topic. Yeah, but I want to add to the topic because sure. a lot of what I call New Age Black African American people, when I right, the theory or the concept I'm thinking, has adopted this Anunnaki talk. And mm. I want to talk mm. for this Anunnaki people, mm. right? But let's go to the callers first. Uh, go ahead, caller. Can you hear me? Hey, good morning, um, the new Aaron and Anku. Hey, morning. good morning, brother. Yeah, thank you, Anku, for giving a full explanation that the guy who wrote the book from Babylon to Timbuktu is correct mm-hmm. about the Ethiopian Empire and the influence that you're talking about Samaria, mm-hmm. which would be Ur. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, when you study the scriptures to, 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 to seek the truth, right? You know, of course they know about Magog and Goma. And mm-hmm. You talk about Ashkenazi, Magog and Goma. All of those are European would be northeastern. So then we know that Abraham is a Hebrew. And so the fact that, you know, I, I've taken a glimpse... You know, this is why I'm afraid. I'm taking, I've, I've taken a glimpse at the, uh, some Jewish exegesis, right? Mm-hmm. And such as, uh, as, as, as the Midrash. And, and it says that Adam and Eve spoke Hebrew. Okay? Mm-hmm. This, is, this is what it says. Right. All right? And so what I'm saying is, as far as Afro-Asiatic tribes, right? We know a, a miscegenation had to take place. And so you and I would have discussed some time back, uh, the San Bushman, you call him uh, by the, 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 the African name, but, but these people would have been, see, and we mentioned it in the early part of the show, but when you talk about their DNA, but he failed to realize that the reason why they mentioned it is that their DNA is unadulterated. Right or wrong, Uncle? Who's, whose DNA is unadulterated? The San Bush people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah unadulterated mm-hmm. versus the Denisovians and the other uh, uh, barbarians that live in Europe that are adulterated. Mm-hmm. So what, 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 the, what, the, what I, you and I spoke with before was the DNA symposium. And you know science... Just as good as me or better, Uncle. Mm-hmm. I listen to you, and I'm very impressed. So you could explain to them how accurate it is to track down DNA, just like a virus, by doing a molecular clock. So this is nothing doubtful here. Uh, right. The lady, Catherine, uh, Catherine Kelly, had written an article years ago about this DNA symposium that actually proved the origins of man. Right. And this is, this is, this is the DNA so, symposium that they held. So, so I, I was at Tuskegee University when the Human Genome Project was being carried yeah, out. Yeah. So, so just explain, mm-hmm. yeah, what I'm saying is, mm-hmm. Abra- I mean, I mean seeing that the fact you mentioned the connection between Ethiopia mm-hmm. and Samaria. Right. So we, we, I, I can use the little bit of knowledge I have in my pea brains to, to juxtapose what you're saying, because mm-hmm. the fact that Ethiopia speak Aramaic, mm-hmm. and they were able to understand the Hebrew people that reached Israel, it's, doesn't that mean anything to, to anyone, even a pea brain? Doesn't that mean anything, Anku? Well, and explain to me the significance of the Afro-Asiatic tribe and why they're hiding this from us. Bless up. I'll yeah. listen, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Yes, yes. So, the Human Genome Project, I was in Tuskegee University in the 90s, and they were releasing what they had found. Um, Tuskegee University, there was a satellite uh, program there. And I was able to sit in on on one of the the, the discoveries as they were bringing forth the information. And to make a long story short, what they talked about, this brown germ, what they called black people, had the most variations, it had the most mutations or the most adaptations, which means it had been around much longer than all of the other um, germs or genes that ultimately came out of it, right? So this is, this is definitely something that has been um, well documented, right? Now, with regard to you know, some of the other things he was saying, you know, I, I would just continue to say in terms of this link between Ethiopia, Sumeria, etc. Everything on what you call Africa today, that whole continent was called Ethiopia or Ether Utopia. This was a utopia for etheric beings, Ether being the very prominences of the sun. So the sun gives off these, um, what they call gas flares, or it gives off light, obviously, but not just light, actual ether, a combination of very potent gases, right? And we are their children. We are the children, as the Messiah says in 
uh, Revelation uh, 22 and 16, he is saying that he is actually one of those, and I'm just going to read it quickly, he is actually one of those who is a, a, a solar terrestrial force on earth. Revelation 22, 16, I, Yahshua, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. He was referencing himself as a star. He was referencing himself as one who had the potency of the sun here on earth, right? So as we uh, look at what has happened to us, because everything you're, you're putting up um, to, to question is based on the fact that something happened to us mm. and we're responding to it. I think it's a phone call now. Yeah, right? there's a phone call there. Producer Patrick, uh, call it through. Go ahead, Colin. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, good afternoon. Ms. Good, good morning, Mr. Neary. Good morning, uh, Ms. Karina. Good morning to your guests. Good morning. Good morning, morning. morning. Yes, yes. Um, 52 said something that was, um, that was important. He said something about seeking the truth. Mm -hmm. And I feel as if that um, in, in this time of um, in the information age, there's no reason why we, we shouldn't be able to come to the truth. You know, the only problem that most of us will have with the truth is that it's going to disagree with what we, what we have already accepted as what we want to be it. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. the problem would be that individuals will be more concerned about being right and more concerned about, like, just doing what, 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 what the truth is, right? Mm -hmm. Now, um, like how you always talk about Ethiopia. I mean, it, it always fascinates me when individuals talk about Ethiopia and the fact that Ethiopia is, like, the only place in the world that has the tradition of the King of Kings title, and the King of Kings title is something that is so prevalent in, um, in Christianity doctrine and all other type of doctrines that deal with that type of thing, but yet still, they ignore that fact. You know what I mean? They ignore that fact, which to me is a very crucial mistake because, you know what I mean, because in that, like, 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 like how your guest was saying earlier, I mean, he probably could explain when I come up, but he was saying something about the um, information that they have is proven truth. Proven by who? You know what I mean? Because if, if, well, if I you have an idea. I can answer the question. Oh, I mean, yeah, but okay, I mean, but I mean, if it be quick, because I want to, I want to say something, because I mean, because Pro, here, Pro, get, follow the language. That's how I started the show. The yeah, language, but see, when the you language. say follow, the, when, you, when you say follow the language, right? Mm -hmm. Like I could write a book, and I could die, I could pass away, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, just like to 10, 20 years down the road, somebody could come along, and I mean, you don't know what could happen to, to my writings before it reaches into another person's hands. You see, I'm trying to say this so to say verify that type of thing to say it is truth. That is subjective. That is no, not objective. No. Objective. So, so based on your premise, we cannot verify any writing is truth. Well, see, well, well, well that's my point. That's the point I want to so, get but, to with but you now. Are you there see? writings that have truth? Okay, but see, that's the point I want to get well, to with you. Answer that question. And, and, are, are there writings that have truth? Yes, they are. Okay, but how do you yes, verify yes, they it, that, that, that they are true? Well, I'm, see, see, I'm going to see, see, and that's why I didn't want you to really answer the question, because I didn't want to get down this road. See, I want to stick on my point. If you would let me finish, you'd, you'd understand ahead, what I'm saying, you see? The point I wanted to make is this. Now, when it comes to um, truth, right, like if you want to talk about historical truth or written truth or historical truth, the only way you can say, really say, well, say uh, 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 there's a source that has that kind of truth is, is, is if you are a nation that has never been conquered and you have your historical documents from, from, from day one, you start your, your, your day two to, to the end. So, so, so these are historically nation-based documents. So you can say, well, these things are real because these things have never been tampered with because and Ethiopia is the only place in Africa, again, we talk about Ethiopia. Ethiopia is the only place in Africa that has that. So you see, when you look at oh, Ethiopia, Liberia we talk too. Liberia uh, too. I'm, I'm, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, when we talk about Ethiopia now, and we look at Ethiopia, and we look at the King of Kings, right? Mm -hmm. that there is no doubt that His Imperial Majesty is the descendant of that line of kings, and he is the 225th line in that line of kings. See, now, that, that, that is something that I can, uh, that is a reality and a truth that I can see for myself without it even being written. I can take written documents, and I could probably use written documents like cross-reference and find that he is who he is, but what I'm trying to say is that that type of truth is objective truth. That is a reality. And see, I, I, I'm and see my thing is that I feel as if that the most important thing for us as people is to stand as one man. That is the ultimate goal in the Bible, for us to stand as one man. Now, who is that one man? You see, and that is the question that we must ask ourselves. And see, um, when you're talking about the universe and everything else, His Imperial Majesty fulfills these things on every level possible. He is Leo. 
He was born on the 23rd of July. So for the astrologers, uh, so for the astrologers and everything else, he is Leo. I have one I, question for you because I know you got to go soon. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. What was, I, I, what he, was, he, what was he, the religion of Haley Selassie? What was the religion of Haley Selassie? He's Christian. He was a Christian, but see, but see, but but yes. but but see, but he came to bring something new for one. New name, new way, but the things that he brought are the things of old. You know what I mean? So you see, so, so why did he remain a Christian then? Because but, Christians remain religion. See, but, but I, 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 think, I think I had two questions just now. Go ahead. Because Christian Christianity is a right religion. That's why Haley Selassie was Christian. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but see, but see, but, but what you have to understand, see, is that Christianity is originally from us. So, so the Christianity that we have... So you're right back to where we started. No, but hold on. But, no, no, but see, but, but see, what I'm trying to say to you is this, though. He is the king of kings, which is relevant in this time. Right? Our job is to identify the king of kings. You understand? Right. And to follow that way. Now, my, my, my thing is that, see, now, there, there can be no question. No, there can be no doubt. Because, like I said before, the truth about his majesty is objective truth. He represents ancient so, times. He is the king of kings. Everything, everything that we need to correct our society is found within it. And you don't have to be a, like, you don't have to grow dreadlocks to be a Rastaman. His imperial majesty is a king. And we need a society, so we need individuals of all type disciplines. But the bottom line is that we need an understanding that I, can bring go a take change a break. in our society today. I gotta go take a break. I gotta bring you on the show one of these days. But um, Uncle, I know you want to respond, but I gotta take a break, right? This has been Guided Radio AM with CA Nuri. We're gonna take this break. This is my second break. I'm looking at uh, uh, Kermit right now. <laughs> we'll be right back. I look funny all black up yesterday. But she says she bumped into a wall when she's running after the churn dam. Yeah, but last Saturday you see her arm was all black and blue, right? What you saying? You think something warm between her and Jack? I ain't sure, but you know Jack is a jealous man. I hear him and Cora last Friday. I hear him say he hear Cora have eyes for Junior. Now you know that ain't true. Cora is a good woman. Does mind her business, take care of them churn and go to church every Sunday. So what you think we should do? I think we should report Jack, you know. Cora don't say nothing, but silence hides violence. And we don't want to line up in the cemetery. No. Not me. I ain't getting in nobody business. Then Jack come after me and I land up next to Cora. No, ma, we could call a text crime stopper. And remember, we can even get some grocery money for our tip. Remind me again, how does this work? We can call them in Miami at 328-TIPS or 328-8477. Or when we in the island, call toll free at 300-TIPS or 300-8477. And if you don't have no minutes, use the Crack Crime Bahamas app and we could text them. And the messages get on mix up, mix up before it leave your phone so nobody can know what you say saying. So we're we'll waiting on then. Let's go earn some grocery money. Elaine, you hear what Boss Man was saying in the back there just now? About what? The luncheon? Why are you always worried about food? No. About how we gotta pay a little more for national insurance. Mildred, you talking fool. I can't afford to pay that. And you're always crying for him out. Ain't gonna be much. Boss still gotta pay. Why should you lie 2024? I think that terminal benefit is what did help my boy Tony mm -hmm. through the pandemic. Oh. That same unemployment benefit. And guess what? What? Susan, <laughs> I think she'd get a pregnancy benefit, eh? You mean maternity benefit, eh? So now we gotta do our part to make sure we get our pension. All right. For more information, visit nipreincrease.com. And welcome back to Garden Radio AM. Uncle, quickly respond so I can ask yeah. my next question. What I would say to the brother, and I appreciate him calling in, right, is that whenever we want to talk about Haley Selassie, use the words of Haley Selassie, right? Bring forth the actual words where he's saying what it is you're trying to prove. Not just to me. I'm just saying in general because then that makes what you're saying a lot more palatable and a lot more clear. Haley Selassie is the 57th barber in the Holy Coptic Church. We do recognize Haley Selassie. You understand what I'm saying? However, our understanding of what he was teaching, we understand he was a Christian. He was an Ethiopian Christian. So he would have been teaching the same doctrine that the Holy Coptic Church is teaching in some way, right? All of us aren't necessarily going to say exactly the same thing because we're not a monolith. But the fact that he never denounced Christianity means 
anybody who's following him, you should be following what he followed. But uh, Nuri, you wanted to mention something else. Yes. Um, I was looking at Aaron to see if she wanted to respond. Uh, I was talking about conspiracy theories about all of these religions, right? Mm. Uh, one of those conspiracy theories I tend to see, keep on repeating, is first that there are some snake-like people existing. And then, of course, they can say, oh, it's, a, it's white people out of snake-like people. It's interesting. It's a, it's a conspiracy right? theory. But you believe in snake people? No, it's in the Bible. The Bible says snake people? It yeah, it said that Satan was a serpent. Oh, that let's read snake it. People, that ain't snake people. That's just serpent. That's you, just mean, you mean a serpent who was speaking to Eve wasn't a serpent? So you believe there's a a sack? I can have a whole show on this. A yeah. sack of people who have snake like DNA. Yeah, you, all three three people in here have snake DNA inside them. I have snake the, DNA. The oldest part of your brain is called the reptilian complex. Your brain is you called the R complex. I was looking at Wilson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have some people with poor we, complex who are snakes. Yeah, yeah. We, so. You, there are a particular group of people, which a number of, again, I, say, I put it as black religions, mm. not standard African-American religions, who have this idea that there are a group of not necessarily humanistic people, but special people who are sinister in nature, mm. who are snake people. Is there any biblical reference to that? Do they yes. snake these are people? You, are they, you, and they were sent to Earth. Well, are you referring to the term reptilian? Reptilian. Okay, yes. Thank okay. you very much. In, in Revelation 12 and 9, right? And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan and deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. So they said that a serpent called the devil was cast out into the earth, which is a water planet, which is an environment that reptiles thrive in, which also speaks to uh, the fact that when you actually do research on what they call human beings and the fact that we have a reptilian brain, we have characteristics of these beings. Yes, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's biblical. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> we can come back to that. Yeah, we can come back Next to week, that. we can talk about Anunnaki, uh, the reptilian people. Yes. And then we can talk about Judgment in the end of the world. Sure. What can I be in anticipating? Will it, will it be like some kind of thunder well, we, lightning? We because I can make it to heaven. I know, but you all. I'll say this. I, some people say we're in the modern times. However, we are in the latter days. In the latter days? Yes. We can't be in the modern times and in the latter days at the same time. I just want to make sure when the spaceship comes, I have my ticket. The New Jerusalem. Whatever. I just want to be Revelation on the spaceship. Revelation 21. This has been Guardian <laughs> Radio with C. A. Aaron make it on the spaceship. Change your ways. Hell hot. Hell hot. <laughs> I just say hell hot. As, as evidenced by the AC in this room. Yes. yes. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. <laughs>